Next presenting company will be Respiratories, and with us we have CEO uh, Johan Dott. So welcome Johan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, Respiratorius is, was founded as a research bin out from Lund University in the light, late 90s. The initial focus of Respiratorius was to develop new effective candidate drugs for, the, for treatment of respiratory diseases such as COPD and severe asthma, which was then a uh, therapeutic area lacking of effective drugs. In year 2012, Respiratorius acquired the as oncology acid VL001, which has then been developed through clinical studies and is now being prepared for a phase three study based on the very positive results from the initial studies. The uh, new um, candidate drugs for candidate drug for COPD and uh, asthma is RCD405 and is now being prepared for a phase one study. The business model of Respiratorius is built on out-licensing of, uh, out of the projects. And we are actively seeking uh, uh, partners for the late stage clinical development and commercialization of the projects. We have ongoing partnership discussions, although much as attention has been towards completing the product VL001 and uh, initiating the PK study. Going a little bit deeper into VL001, uh, it is for the treatment and it's a new treatment for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, which is a, the most common type of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And annually about 60,000 people are diagnosed with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma in US and Europe. The uh, overall five-year survival is approximately uh, 70%. But the problem is that 10 to 15% are primarily refractory to the first-line therapy. And 40% of those who actually respond to the first-line therapy uh, relapses within 18 to 24 months. So there is an evident uh, medical need and as you can see also the non-Hodgkin's uh, medical uh, medication market is increasing annually and 30% uh, is uh, accounted for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. lymphoma. Um, in order to improve the first-line therapy, a new cell line model was developed uh, for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and different strategies to improve the first-line therapy was uh, evaluated. The attention was towards HDAC inhibitors, uh, which are known as uh, sensitizers to chemotherapy. Uh, and Valproate was, uh, was the preferred choice, showing very good, strong results in the preclinical uh, evaluation. And uh, it is also known to ha have a positive effect on gene expression and cell cycle. It is a known drug since the 60s to treat epilepsy. And uh, since it's a well-known uh, drug, it has an established safety profile. And uh, we were able to start a phase one study with available drug uh, uh, available at the pharmacy. Uh, it should be noted that in the first line, uh, uh, f uh, the phase one study, we also established that uh, Valproate is synergistic with CD20 target, uh, targeted therapy, which is in our case R the R in our CHOP. The phase one, two A study uh, showed a, uh, a significant improvement of the overall survival where we evaluated Valproet in combination with immunochemotherapy RSHOP. And as you can see, the one-year overall survival was 100% and the two-year overall survival was 96%. And in the uh, study, we didn't have any control group, which is very common in uh, oncology phase one studies. Uh, but we use the Swedish lymphoma registry for patients treated by, between, uh, between year 2000 and 2015 uh, and performed a match pair analysis comparing patients with the same gender, age and uh, also uh, uh, um, 
disease status. And overall, we can show that we have an, uh, more than 10% increase in overall survival. And uh, another statistic, uh, statistic analysis showed that we have an 80% reduction of risk of mortality. Uh, and this is very strong results and should be compared to 30%, which is considered clinically 30% uh, uh, reduction of risk of mortality, which is considered clinically relevant. This data was used in a uh, scientific advice meeting with EMA, which confirmed that respiratories may move directly to a phase three uh, single pivotal study. Um, with the addition of um, pharmacokinetic data for the new uh, formulation we have been developing since. The new formulation is a combination of immediate and extended release uh, granules and pellets, which uh, releases uh, the valproate over six hours, which means that it allows for twice daily dosing compared to the drugs we used in the phase one, two, A study, uh, which were, uh, were necessary to uh, dose three times daily. The new formulation has a very distinct release profile, differentiating from all available dr uh, valproate drugs on the market. And we are considering this an opportunity to actually place VL001 as a new, uh, a new chemical pr uh, entity pricing. And this has come be been confirmed with uh, pricing experts. Uh, the PK study that we are uh, planning to start as soon as possible, uh, um, we have which will be performed in healthy subjects, and the um, uh, uh, required documentation has been filed to the ethics committee, and the submission of the uh, uh, to the regulatory agency is end, uh, due end of October. Uh, which allows for having all the approvals before end of this year. Uh, we have performed an analysis of the uh, uh, products of, uh, with a similar strategy in terms of having an adjuvant to the standard first-line therapy with RSHOP. And what really stands out here is that VL001 outperforms the competition both in terms of overall survival as well as uh, lack of significant uh, side effects. So uh, this means that we have very strong data and uh, we still uh, and we have a strong confidence in VL001. Over the years, we have uh, accomplished quite a lot, uh, quite a big deal, and uh, we have a phase three study design, which has been confirmed with EMA, and we're also planning for, sci for scientific advice with FDA, because this is something that uh, might allow for different regulatory strategies. Uh, so we are planning to do that. We have uh, just recently accomplished the prototype selection, uh, which is a, a very big step for respiratories, being able to have our own product. Before we only had very good results, but now we have also strong, uh, strong results and our own product. And we are planning to start the, the PK study as soon as possible. Uh, we have been able to um, uh, have a patent granted on, over the all, overall concept and we have a uh, patent application on a new uh, formulation which is in prosecution in several countries and we have made some progress over the uh, last couple of uh, months. Jumping directly to RCD405, which is a novel and innovative first-in-class anti-inflammatory and bronchodilator for COPD and severe asthma, which is still in preclinical development, being prepared for a uh, first-in-human study. Just to uh, set the stage, COPD is one of the most common and rapidly growing diseases. And, uh, it is uh, characterized by inflamed and, uh, 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 and uh, constricted uh, airways. And it is one of the leading causes of death globally. And current treatments are only to reduce risk of death, 
why it is is a there is a huge unmet medical need for a new drug. We have a lead candidate, which is RCD405, which is a new chemical entity, and we just recently had allowance for a patent. We have documented anti-inflammatory and bronchodilatory properties, and the physiochemical properties of the substance, uh, RCD405, is uh, optimal for a dry powder inhalation formulation. Just recently, we announced that we have been able to accomplish strong preclinical pharmacology data in terms of an ex vivo study. You see some of the results from the study. Uh, where we have, the study has been performed in different species, and what you see here is rat to the left and human to the right, human airway tissue which has initially been constricted and we can see the relax relaxation uh, measured at different concentration. And this is very strong data which will be supporting our uh, first uh, in human study. Further milestones accomplished is that we have been in the uh, the preclinical data package is that we have performed initial safety studies with no uh, critical findings. We have performed the ex vivo study with positive and strong results, and we have also in vitro evaluated the, uh, the anti-inflammatory uh, anti properties of RCD405. CMC and formulation, the production and process is established, and we have a collaboration with Econovo on the formulation, and the initial fundamental finding is that RCD is optimal for uh, uh, formulation into a dry powder formulation. The value enhancing milestones we can foresee over the next coming year, moving the asset forward to uh, a uh, phase one study is that uh, we have a, uh, which will be the next step is to initiate and complete the toxicology studies, uh, which will be performed by inhalation in rat and dog. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's an expensive study why we have been ticking the boxes prior to that uh, and it's a very important study. Uh, we will initiate additional clarifying mode of action studies and, uh, and by, tick, uh, by we then tick the boxes in the, in the coming toxicology studies we will also initiate GMP production uh, for the IMP uh, clinical studies. We have been allowed a patent in Europe just recently, uh, which is very positive, and the patent application prosecution is, uh, is uh, going forward also in other countries. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you for an interesting presentation. Um, you just completed a new formulation of VAL001. Yes. Um, how does this add to the competitive edge for the candidate? Uh, it does. Uh, I mean, previously we have only had uh, uh, very strong results based on available drugs, but now we have a dedicated formulation uh, which has a release profile which is uh, perfect for the, this new uh, use of Valproet. Uh, and you recently announced positive data on your uh, candidate RCD405. Uh, how does this affect the project? Uh, it is an important finding and it's a uh, reassuring that we are making uh, having a product that is effective and next step will be to make sure it is safe as well. And this is the, uh, the strategy is moving the asset forward and stepwise. And now we have the effective uh, eff efficacy data and we will then um, move the forward to having the safety data also in uh, the toxicology studies. And the candidate is developed as a dry powder formulation together with Iconovo. Yes, uh, it is. Yes. What is the next step in the project? Uh, it's also something that we move uh, forward stepwise. 
And we have been able to have the fundamental data in forms of that it's an optimal uh, substance for dry powder formulation. And as we progress in toxicology, uh, we will initiate next step also in the formulation of the dry powder uh, formulation for inhalation together with Econovo. Interesting, and uh, thank you for coming here today, Jan. Thank you.